So the topic about thermal properties of the metal. Uh, the last session we were discussing heat capacity and thermal capacity. Uh, heat capacity or thermal capacity or specific heat capacity. So you have to learn the formulas for both. First one for heat capacity. So heat capacity is equals to energy divided by the temperature change. Whereas specific heat capacity is equals to energy divided by mass into temperature change. Symbolic uh, representation of the formula, how we represent the specific heat capacity and heat capacity. So symbolically we represent heat capacity by letter capital C is equal to energy. Energy, some books you will find they use letter Q, some books they use letter E, but I prefer to use E because it is easy to recognize that E energy is there. So I will use E here, but in the book, you may find that instead of E, they write Q. That's the same thing because in the book, most of you will find Q is also representing the energy, but I prefer to use E for energy. So you will not make a mistake. Then the temperature change, how we represent the temperature change. Whenever something is a change, we use this symbol Delta. This is called a Delta and because it's a temperature, so it will be capital T means temperature change. So where C is the heat, heat capacity, E is the energy and delta T is the temp. A specific heat is also denoted by letter C, but it will be small letter. Energy, we will use E or you can also use Q divided by mass, which is M divided by temperature change. That is delta T. So C is equals to E M delta E divided by M delta T or capital C is equals to E divided by Delta D. So what is the difference here? Capital C stands for heat capacity, whereas small c stands for and the small c is representing the specific heat capacity. So you have to uh, learn these formulas as well as the definition in exam, they asked to define heat capacity. So the standard definition of heat capacity is energy needed to produce temperature change by one degree. And if they ask calculate, uh, define specific heat capacity, that's energy required to change the temperature by one degree for one kilogram object. Now some examples related to this. So in this question, a domestic hot water tank, which contained 200 gram. So always try to sort out the values which are given to you. So 200 kilogram is a mass at 20. So that's a starting temperature T1. How much energy must be supplied to this water uh, to heat this water to 70. So the final temperature is 70. The specific heat capacity of water is given. So specific heat. So it means a small c is given. So the formula which relate the small c, the specific heat capacity is energy divided by mass into temperature change. The difference in the temperature, which will be in this example, initial is 20, final is 70. So the temperature changes 50. So heat capacity, specific heat capacity is 4,200. So we write 4,200. Energy, we don't know. M is the mass of object, which is 200 kilogram. And the temperature change is starting from 20 and ending at 70. So change in temperature 70 minus 20, that's 50. So this hole is divided 
this whole is divided because we need e so it will be multi multiplied with the numerator other side so it will be 4200 multiplied by 200 multiplied by 50 that will be the energy so 4200 multiplied by 200 multiplied by 50 so the final answer is 42 million so it is whenever the number is too big you can write in terms of the prefix you can say it is 42 megajoules because uh, one, one megajoule is equals to this number so we can convert this if you write an exam you write this as an answer that is correct even you can use the power representing in a scientific notation like you can write 42 into 10 power 6 joules that is also the right way is it clear this example how we work out uh, the energy required anyone having a doubt or a question in this part any question or a doubt then the state of the melting uh, before comparing the state of the melting some questions related to the specific heat and thermal capacity like I have two objects I supplied same amount of energy for object A I supply 100, 1000 joule for object B I also supplied the same energy they have the same mass as well for example I was having 5 kilogram of object A and I'm having 5 kilogram of object B. But when we supply the energy, the temperature change for object A, it changes from 20 to 22. For object B, originally it was at 20, but its temperature changes to 30. Which object is having the higher specific heat capacity? We supplied the same amount of energy. We have the same masses as well, but the only difference is the temperature change. Temperature change for A, it is a small change in temperature, but for B, it is a greater change in temperature. Which object is having a greater thermal capacity? Yeah, that's. So when we work out, the correct answer is A is having a higher thermal capacity than B. You can work out from the formula directly. As you can see, the formula for specific heat capacity is energy divided by mass into temperature change. So we supply the same energy. We have the same masses. The only thing what is the difference is the temperature change. So the object which will have because one one side the quantity is in numerator the other side it is denominator so it means they have <coughs> inverse relation if one of the quantity increases the other will decrease so that's why the one which will have a smaller change in temperature will have a higher thermal capacity or specific heat capacity you can also calculate this directly there's a formula if you want to calculate for a if i want to calculate the specific heat energy divided by mass into temperature change so energy is 1000 joules The mass of A is 5, 
and the temperature change is 2. So when I solve 1000 divided by 10, the specific heat, the value of the C will come out as 100 joule per kilogram degree centigrade. But when we calculate for B, the thermal capacity is energy divided by mass into temperature change. So it is 1000 joules. The mass is 5, but the temperature change is 10 here. So when we solve 1000 divided by 50, so it will be 20 joules per kilogram degree centigrade. So you can clearly see that B is having a smaller specific heat capacity than A. So those objects which are having the smaller change in temperature when we supply equal amount of energy and the object will show a smaller change in temperature will have a greater thermal capacity. So without calculation, it can be done just using the formula or if you want to calculate and work out, you can also use that. Is it clear? The concept of the thermal capacity or heat specific heat capacity. Then what happened in a process of a melting when we supply heat energy to a substance in a solid state and it convert into a liquid without changing a temperature we call that as melting and what melting point means temperature at which a solid is converting into a liquid we call that as a melting point boiling means when we supply heat energy and the liquid convert into gas or vapor but there is no change in temperature we call that as a boiling and the temperature at which this process happened occur we call that as a boiling point condensation means when we remove the energy from the gaseous state it convert into a liquid we call that as condensation or freezing or solidification when a liquid is there we remove the energy and it turn into a solid we call that as solidification so these are the names for the process given if we have a solid we supply heat energy it turned into a liquid if we supply heat energy it will turn into a gas but liquid turned into a gas can be boiling can be evaporation already we discussed the difference between the boiling and evaporation if it is only at the surface at any range of temperature it is evaporation but at a specific temperature it will be boiling and gas turned to liquid or liquid turned into a solid so remove it getting colder so gas turned to liquid we call condensation or liquid turned to solid we call that as freezing so when something get hotter it means the internal energy decrease increases and something get colder the internal energy will decrease the heating curve like example when a solid is heated for a longer period of a time the solid first melt then it will boil this is refers to a heating curve like example we have a substance originally in a solid state so we supply energy the solid temperature is increasing so here the solid temperature is increasing but once the solid start to melt there will be no change in temperature and if there is no change in temperature or temperature at which a solid is converting into a liquid what we call that temperature we call that as a melting point then we have both mixture of a solid once all of the solid convert into a liquid then the liquid temperature will rise once a liquid start to boil or liquid is turning into a gas there is no change in temperature and temperature at which a liquid turn into a gas we call that as a boiling point is it clear if we further supply heat energy the gas temperature will increase so the curve will point upward so this is a heating curve a curve which shows a change in temperature 
and the change in state for an object originally at a, in a solid state. Any doubt in the heating curve? Then a cooling curve is opposite. Like when we remove the energy, like originally we have a gas. Originally we have a gas. The gas cooled down, so temperature of a gas is decreasing. Once the gas turned into a liquid, that's condensation or a boiling point, same thing. And here we'll have both gas and liquid state. Then the liquid start to freeze. Then the liquid temperature is decreasing. Once the liquid start to freeze, what we call, we call that as a freezing point. And all of the liquid, once all of the liquid turn into a solid, then further the solid temperature will decrease. So in a heating curve, we supply energy. In a cooling curve, we remove the energy. Then what is the meaning of latent heat? So basically, latent heat means energy required to change the state. The term latent heat means energy needed to change the state of an object. And a specific latent heat means energy needed to change state of one kilogram object. Like example, I have an object in a solid state. And its temperature example is 120. I'm supplying heat energy. And what I observe, I observe when I'm supplying heat energy, the substance melt. It was originally in a solid state, but now it turned into a liquid state. What is the temperature of this liquid formed? What will be the temperature? Originally, the solid is at 120. We supply the heat energy and we observe at 120, the solid start to melt. What is the temperature of the liquid formed. So whenever we change the state, there's no change in temperature. So if solid is at 120 and it is melting, the temperature of the liquid which is formed, that is also 120. Because whenever there is a change in state, there is no change in the temperature. So if we say I provide or I supply 2000 joules here to melt. So how much energy we need to melt the substance to change the state that energy is called latent heat. So heat needed to change the state. Like example, I have a substance in a solid state. I'm supplying energy. So the substance changes the state into a liquid. How much energy is supplied to a substance that is simply refers to a latent heat. Another example of a latent heat, you have a container which is filled with liquid. So you have a container which is filled with a liquid and you're supplying heat energy. So you're supplying heat energy and you observe the liquid is turning into gas.
so when a liquid turn into a gas at a specific temperature we call this process as boiling so if liquid was example at 100 degree centigrade what will be the temperature of the gas formed that is also 100 degree centigrade because whenever there is a change in state there is no change in the temperature so the energy which we supply like example we supply 4000 joules to change liquid into gas so how much energy is needed to change the state this energy what we call this energy this energy is known as the latent heat so latent heat is basically the energy needed to change the state of a substance is it clear the concept of latent heat anyone having a doubt but when we use the term specific latent heat The term specific latent heat means energy needed to change the state of 1 kilogram substance that is known as a specific latent heat. Like example, I have uh, say 5 kilogram ice. So I have 5 kilogram of ice, 5 kg of ice is there and it is at 0 degree centigrade and I supplied heat energy. I am heating the ice and I supplied 1000 joules to this ice and what we observe because it's a melting point of the ice is 0 so it start to melt, it will turn into liquid so originally it was solid but now the state is a liquid that is also 5 kg what is the temperature of the liquid form that is same zero degree because the temperature does not change when the state changes we call that as a melting so what is specific latent heat specific latent heat means lat energy needed for to melt one kilogram to change one kilogram of a substance so here 1000 joule is there for so 1000 joule is for 5 kg but i need specific latent heat the term specific means i need energy for 1 kilogram so it is energy divided by the mass so 1000 divided by 5 what i will get it will be 200 joule per kilogram it means for each kilogram to melt the 5 kilogram ice, I need 1000 joule. But if I need, if I want to melt 1 kilogram ice, I only need 200 joules of energy. So energy required to change the state of 1 kilogram substance, either from solid to liquid, liquid to gas or opposite, that energy is known as specific latent heat. And the formula is energy divided by mass is it clear the concept of latent heat and specific latent heat specific latent heat is for melting one kilogram and latent heat is for total object like how much energy is needed to melt the whole object we call latent heat but how much energy is needed for one kilogram of that substance we call that as specific latent heat you have to learn these definitions for latent heat as well as specific. The formula for specific latent heat so the specific latent heat that is is energy divided by mass so how we represent the symbolic representation specific latent heat is denoted by letter l energy can be e or q and mass is denoted by m and what about the unit unit of energy is joule 
and unit of mass is kilogram so it is joules per kilogram is it clear the concept of specific latitude so the formulas which you have to learn to, for this part the three formulas as we already discussed the first two the heat capacity the second one was specific heat capacity and the third one is specific latent heat which is energy divided by mass so when we say latent heat of vaporization the term vaporization means when liquid turn into a gas so it's the same thing when a liquid turn into a gas we call vaporization and so how much and fusion means when a solid is turning into a liquid so how much energy is needed to convert 1 kg liquid into gas we call it specific latent heat of vaporization and how much energy is needed to convert 1 kg of solid into a liquid we call that as fusion it's the same thing only this word is added if solid is changing into liquid we call fusion if liquid is turning into gas we call vaporization there is no difference in the two definition other than the change in the state so example <coughs> in an experiment to find the latent heat of fusion we want to find the latent heat of fusion 15 kg metal is there which need 520000 joules of heat energy to change solid to liquid we have to calculate latent heat of fusion how to calculate latent heat that is energy divided by mass so energy is 520000 whereas mass is 15 so 520000 divided by 15 so we need 34 <coughs> we need 34000 so it is 520000 the original value divided by 15 is equal to 34666 uh, there should be one zero here which is because the original value is 520000 so what we have discussed today uh, i want everyone to learn these formulas because it is very important direct questions are there number 1 the heat capacity that is energy divided by temperature change number 2 specific heat capacity is equals to energy divided by mass into temperature change and the specific latent heat is equals to energy divided by the mass symbolic representation for these equations that also it's important so heat capacity denoted by capital c energy is e and temperature change is delta t specific heat is small c energy is e m is a mass and delta t latent heat is l specific latent heat is energy is e divided by mass and learn the unit unit of thermal capacity joule per degree centigrade or it can be joule per kelvin depending on the temperature value the unit for specific heat capacity it is joule per kilogram degree centigrade and the unit for latent heat it is joule per kilogram
is it clear the three formulas so these are very important formulas you have to learn these <coughs> so there's no other formula in the thermal physics you have to memorize only these three formulas are there uh, there was uh, the gas law p1 v1 equal p2 v2 that was in topic 2.1 but topic 2.2 only these three formulas are important So we'll continue this uh, topic tomorrow, which is about the thermal properties of the matter. And we'll complete this 2.2 tomorrow and discuss the questions related to the topic.